He told me what he said. I want to think about it. Next time I go, I'll get a box full, you know, where I'll have plenty of CDs to pass out. Because you have no idea how many people's lives have been changed when we pass out these CDs. Yours was, wasn't it, Joe? Changed your life forever. And changed you forever, too, didn't it, young lady? Isn't that, and that's all we can say. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Some people say, well, Thurman, he teaches things that nobody else teaches, so he's got to be a cult. You know, I've been accused of that. I sure have. Several times, you know, I've had some people say, you know, you're crazy. I've had PhDs and seminaries write letters about me and tell me that that verse right there don't mean what it says. But yet I've used that verse hundreds of times in my life to see awesome things. Isn't that something? What did that, ver- what did that verse say I can do? If two of us on earth agree about what? Anything? You reckon he meant that? What do you think, son? What does that say? Is that kind of hard to swallow? If two of us on earth agree about what? So if you and me are walking in total obedience to his word, if we come to him in faith, he answers our prayer. Well, see, here's what most people do. They come to him and say, Oh, God, if it be your will. (laughs) See, they don't know what his will is. So when they don't know what his will is, guess what he does? Let me just show you what he does. Let me show you from the scripture. I mean, because, you know, the thing about it is, so many people pray. I mean, I'm trusting that everybody in this room today is a born-again Christian, that you do know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But if you do not, uh, you know, before the day's over, I'll be happy to lead you to Jesus. You know, that's no problem. It's the simplest thing in the world is come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But the fact is, we as the church really don't believe these awesome promises of God. I mean, he he made this awesome statement. I tell you that if two of you agree down here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Well, when you ask, let's see if we ask, Lord, if it be your will. Let's go to James chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. And let's look at these scriptures in James 1, 6 and 7. And let's see what he says. But let him ask in faith, how much wavering? Nothing wavering. That's why the other day when Trevor was standing right there, I said, son, now that I've prayed for you, are you a man of faith? Do you believe with all your heart you're healed? He said, I do. I said, okay. I said, well, then hand the crutches to your mother there and walk off. You don't need them. First of all, he had to have a lot of faith to do that. You know that? Did he have to have a lot of faith to walk with, that, with a broke leg? Yes, he did. But he did it. But the pain was so severe that he couldn't continue past Wednesday. But then after he talked to Cheryl, and she knew what the problem was when he repented of his unforgiveness toward his dad. I'm telling you, unforgiveness is the biggest killer in the church. Unforgiveness will put a stroke on you. Unforgiveness will put cancer on you. Unforgiveness will kill you and your children. You know, I mean, I think about this, but look what he says. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. I mean, it's what it says. Nothing. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. So if you're not a man of faith or a woman of faith, what are you going to get from God when you pray? Nothing. You ain't going to get nothing. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's what people don't understand. You have to do what you do in faith. Now, in faith happens after obedience. You know, and so many people today in the church do not even come close to walking in obedience to God's word. And that's why you see so few people that get answers from God. I mean, we don't believe. We really don't believe. Just think of that. In fact, let me take you to a scripture uh, that's right now that's ringing off of my heart here. This is a sense, knowledge, faith scripture. When I say sense, I mean it's something we can physically feel and see. This is not God's normal way of doing things. Normally, he does things just by bold faith. But some people can't go there. Some people just can't believe by faith. They need something to touch. They need someone to hold on to. So let's go to this wonderful scripture of James 5, 14, 15, and 16. And this is a sense, knowledge, 
faith scripture. When you just can't have the faith to believe, this is a scripture that says, is any sick among you? By God saying, is any sick among you? Who's that include in the church? That's everybody. He didn't, he didn't cut out nobody, did he? Is any sick among you? Let him or her call for the elders of the church. Do we have any elders in the church today? I hope so, but I ain't too sure. I've been in some churches. I was a Baptist till I was 65, and of course then I left in the last eight years. I've been a non-denominationalist, but for 65 years I was in a Baptist church. And let me tell you what, in the Baptist church we had very few elders of faith. Very few. I, I met very few of them, you know, because... We don't know what the word faith means. We really don't. This is like this scripture says. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, not the prayer of unbelief, but the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So, if we preach that from the pulpit, every pastor of every church, anytime anybody got sick, if a man would just read that once a month to his congregation, if somebody got sick, if you got sick and you knew that scripture was in the Bible and you were a good Christian and you got sick, what would you do, brother? Huh? You'd call the elders, right? You'd go to the pastor of the church and said, hey, or if your lovely bride got sick, you wouldn't go running off down to the doctor. You'd go to church. Is that right? I mean, but now when you go to church, I remember one Sunday we had, I, I taught these kind of principles in my Sunday school class. I was the only Baptist deacon that taught in his Sunday school class these principles from God's Word. Nobody else taught them. So one day, one of the ladies, I come into service one night, on a Sunday night service, and as I'm walking in, this lady says, Thurman, what are you doing in here? I said, ma'am, I'm fixing to come to church. I said, where am I supposed to be? She said, my husband was sick, and I brought him tonight, and he's in there with the pastor and some deacons, and she said, I want you in that room to pray with those men. I said, well, okay. I didn't know there were nobody invited me in there. So I said, I walked in there, and when I opened the door to the pastor's office, there was a retired pastor and the pastor and two or three deacons standing there. And I said, oh. I said, so y'all are fixing to anoint John with oil and pray over him. I, I, first of all, I said, y'all are going to pray over him. I said, what scripture are y'all going to use to base your faith on? And John, the man that was going to be uh, prayed for, he said, we're going to use James 5, 14, 15, and 16. I said, okay, that's a good verse. I said, do you guys that are going to do the praying and the anointing of oil, do you guys believe he's going to be healed when y'all pray for him? And the retired pastor that was there, he said, Thurman, if it's God's will, he'll be healed. If it's not, he won't be. I said, he won't be, I guarantee. Do you see where I'm coming from? If God says, when I pray for you, I've got to pray in faith, nothing wavering, and then I make the stupid statement, well, if it's God's will, when he just made me a statement like that. If he made me a statement like that, is any sick among you, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, if that is true, what am, how am I going to pray? Am I going to pray in faith or unbelief? I mean, do I have something I can base my faith on? I mean, after all, that is in the book of James, and it is in chapter 5, verse 14, 15, 16. Is it not? You know, I went through my whole life as a Baptist. I went through at least 25 years as a Baptist deacon and never knew that verse was even in the Bible. Now, how in the world could a man be a Sunday school teacher and a deacon in a Baptist church all those years and not even know that's in there because he don't read it. I only use the information that was sent to me by the Southern Baptists from Nashville, Tennessee. Anybody ever seen those little Sunday school quarterlies that come to the Baptist church? Any of you guys and gals in here are either still in or have been in a Baptist church? Okay, so some of y'all just like me, okay. If you've been in a Baptist church, if you've been a Sunday school teacher, do, if you're a Southern Baptist, do they send you a quarterly to teach out of? Yeah, they did me. I got one every quarter. Do, do you know what I mean, young lady? Brother, you know what I mean? And I taught out of those books. I didn't teach you out of the Bible. I taught out of the book. So I never learned anything powerful. They don't ever put it in there. So one day, I 
I started reading God's Word, and for the next year, 10 years, 8 or 10 years, I mean, I read and studied the entire Word of God from book, cover to cover. I, 5, 15 hours a week, I'm studying, reading the book. Well, when you read the whole book, you learn things like this. And so then you go to the pastor and say, you know, when people get sick, why don't we send them to the doctor? Why don't we let Jesus heal them? Well, Thurman, that's what God made doctors for. I said, well, I don't agree with that. I mean, I mean, thank God that he made doctors and thank God he made good doctors because if we didn't have some good doctors, most of us would be dead. You know that? You know, praise God that we got some good Christian doctors out there or just doctors. Some of, them not, some of those guys that are doctors ain't no more Christian than I am a fly. Yeah, a lot of them, that's right. You know that? But some of those that are, you know, when they, when they learn, when a doctor, now I've trained a few doctors right here myself, when a real doctor that's a man of God learns he can pray for his patients, guess how, what kind of a doctor he becomes? Ooh, he becomes a great one. He starts seeing God show up and do great and awesome things, and it makes him look good. In fact, one of the doctors that I've trained this, trained to do these things, this doctor, he said, he called me and said, I'm having trouble with the people here. They don't want me to pray for them. I said, well, you know, be selective. Ask your patients if it's okay to pray for them before you pray. I said, so if somebody says, no, I don't want you to pray for me, I said, then don't pray for them, at least not openly where they can hear you. And so he started doing that, and he's going along here. Everything's going really good. He's praying for people and seeing our Lord do great and awesome things. And so he's getting so used to doing this that all of a sudden he forgets to ask. And he prays for a person one day that was not a believer and just laid hands on him and prayed for him. And the person was greatly offended. And they went to the staff and told the staff that they did not appreciate this man. They did not believe in God. And he prayed in the name of Jesus, so they want him terminated from the hospital. So they fired him. And so he called me all upset. Thurman, he said, I, am, I, I, I can't believe that this has happened to me. He said, you got me fired. <laughs> I said, what do you mean I got you fired? He said, well, I was having such good luck praying for my people. I prayed for this one person, and they didn't like it. And so they went to the board and complained, and I got fired. I said, well, praise God. He said, what? I said, praise the Lord. I think it's in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Let's see what that says. Let's see. We've got this awesome scripture here to stand on. But let's see what 1 Thessalonians, in a few things, give thanks. Oh, that's not what that said? Some of y'all are really reading. What does it say do? Okay. So in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So I said, are you praising the Lord for getting fired? He said, Thurman, are you crazy? I said, well, no. I'm just telling you what God says. Is that what he said, brother? In everything? That's just like I tell people, you know, you come out this morning and you're a really good Christian. And you come out this morning, and you're in a hurry to get to church, and you're just barely, you, you've just messed around and, and putting on your uh, eye shadow or your makeup or, or shaving or whatever you did, whether you're a man or woman, whatever you did. And, and now then you've got just barely enough time to get to church. If everything goes just right, and you come out, and you've got two flat tires on the front of your car. So I know every one of you said, well, praise God. Thank you, Lord, for my two flat tires. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's not the way we do business, is it? Do we grumble and complain? Oh, yes, we, we grumble and complain. I know that just this week I was coming down the road, turned in up there, and a great, guy in a great big old John Deere tractor was fixing to turn out on the highway, and I happened to look in his left front tire, and that tractor was flat. So I stopped right beside him, started honking my horn, waving at him, because he's way up there in that tractor. He looked down at me, and I said, got a flat tire on the front. He turned the wheel a little so he could see. And I could read his lips, but I ain't going to tell you what. A, <laughs> he said a dirty word. <laughs> oh, I thought, Lord, he failed his test. <laughs> do we often fail our test? Yes, we do. We fail our test. So he failed his test. But if the Lord tells you in everything give thanks, I told this doctor, I said, you need to repent and tell God you're sorry for fussing and grumbling and calling me and telling me that you're upset with me because I got you fired. I said, how in the world is God going to give you a better job if he don't fire you from this one? He said, well, I never thought about that. 
I said, I guarantee if you'll start praising him and thanking him, that Lord, thank you 